Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And that game really, really freaking hurt. That definitely would have felt good if the New York Knicks were able to pull that one out. But the reality is the New York Knicks were not able to come out victorious in their first in-season tournament game, taking on the Milwaukee Bucks on the road, losing, the final score being 110-105. to 105, And the New York Knicks are now 2-4 and four on the season talk about a game with like so many ups and downs the new york knicks being down 14 points in this basketball game taking the lead back for the first time since the first half having a two-point lead off of a jalen brunson right wing three ball and damian lillard responds that lead lasted literally like 10 seconds because damian lillard was able to execute on the other end i'm gonna have to go back and Watch the tape. I think Julius Randle was supposed to help when it came to that three-pointer. I'm not sure who it was. Maybe Quentin Grimes was supposed to pick him up more to make sure that he was able to wasn't able to navigate around that screen and don't even give him like a little bit of airspace. But Damian Lillard ended up hitting a big time three ball and Jalen Brunson, who was awesome all night long, carrying this New York Knicks team from a scoring perspective or scoring standpoint. Jalen Brunson went to create. Brook Lopez did a good job shutting him off, you know, shutting off his angle of hitting a fadeaway, a fallaway jumper kind of like off balance. I wasn't a big fan. Big time fan of that shot. I understand Jalen Brunson was hot all game, but I would have liked to see him move the basketball. But who knew? Who knows if we would have gotten a quality shot? We don't get very quality shots within this offense, to be completely honest with you guys. And when we do, we were not able to knock them knock them down, but I thought that was a forced jumper by Jalen Brunson. And then the New York Knicks get beat in transition, and Damian Lillard's able to finish, and he's able to capitalize a three-point play. The foul was on Quentin Grimes. So the New York Knicks fought, I'll give them that, and I understand they were shorthanded with no R.J. Barrett, but the Milwaukee Bucks just made so many mistakes in that fourth quarter. We actually played very solid defense, I thought, in that fourth quarter. The New York Knicks just weren't able to score enough at a consistent level, so we were not able to capitalize off of a Giannis travel or able to capitalize off of a missed shot around the basket that I thought was a very good contest, you know, a missed three-pointer by Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez wasn't in double-digit rebounding in this game, but I'll say this. He was freaking fantastic defensively. He finished with seven blocks. And this Milwaukee Bucks team, this is just New York Knicks luck right here. Credit to Adrian Griffin for making adjustments, but this Bucks team was playing terrible defensively entering this game. One of the worst groups in basketball. We know personnel-wise they have potential to be a good defensive team, but obviously the backcourt of Damian Lillard and Malik Beasley, that's not going to be good defensively moving forward. But you still have Giannis and you have Brooke Lopez, and they were able to make adjustments put Brook Lopez into that drop coverage and make him more versatile on, de on defense and that's what they did and when the New York Knicks would go on a run even before we ended up taking the lead and then Damian Lillard took over with just it felt like that dude scored the, th the three-pointer and then the three-point play so <laughs> he scored like six points in like 30 seconds it was so ridiculous but when the New York Knicks would go on a run you know Jalen Brunson gets a bucket Amano quickly gets a bucket Mitchell Robinson's crash in the glass Giannis, who's struggling all season long shooting the three ball, we know that's not his forte, three for three from beyond the arc. Usually he has the worst misses from beyond the arc, or he front rims, front rims them, you know, it's too strong off the back iron. He was just swishing threes tonight, three for three, and a couple of them, or the majority of them, came in that third quarter, or the end of the third quarter, quarter early in the fourth, and I don't like moral victories, I like how the Knicks competed, but... When the Bucks weren't able to execute in that fourth quarter at a very high level and we were competing well defensively, like the Knicks just need a win. You needed someone else to step up besides Jalen Brunson. By the way, elephant in the room, because we lost, I haven't really addressed it much, but Jalen Brunson, extremely efficient. Looks like this dude's back. I understand they don't have very good defense, the Milwaukee Bucks, especially when it comes to the backcourt but they did make some adjustments tonight. Jalen Brunson had 45 points, and his three ball wasn't even falling. That was the impressive thing about Jalen Brunson's performance. Just the only nitpick, probably a turnover he had in the fourth quarter, but it really didn't affect things when it came to the next possession when the Bucks ended up getting the ball off of the turnover because they were not able to execute. But my nitpick is that that shot after Damian Lillard because when Brunson hit that three ball on the right wing with 110 left, we're up two. And then Damian Lillard's able to hit the three, which put them up one. And then Jalen Brunson isolated. I guess he had the matchup that he wanted. And I thought he forced the shot in that position. And then Damian Lillard wasn't able to execute. And Julius Randle forced, forced, a, forced a shot around the basket. 
Randall did hit a couple pretty big shots in the fourth quarter, but obviously he didn't execute in the fourth when it came, or at the end of the fourth, when it came to a couple shots when we're trying to get ourselves back in the game and gives her shot give ourselves a shot like for the free throw game but for three quarters of basketball specifically also like Julius Randle's bad he was really bad but yeah Jalen brought in 45 points four assists maybe you want to see him probe around and distribute the basketball more but when he did you have Josh Hart in the lineup you don't have RJ Barrett I'm not trying to make an excuse but Josh Hart didn't hit one three-pointer tonight Josh Hart was terrible terrible from three this is my problem with Josh Hart we know he's a good rebounder jack of all trades player gets deflections good defensive player facilitates pretty well but he's the guy that does the little things. He's not someone that you start on your team. He's been an up and down three point shooter throughout his career. He did not shoot it well from three. You look at the Bucks; they shot just tremendous. Um, Marjon um, Bochamp, who ended up getting action for the Milwaukee Bucks coming off the bench, he comes in the game. He knocks down threes. So I don't want to say they had out of like uncharacteristic performances, but Giannis hitting three, going three for three from three. That's definitely uncharacteristic. And Mitchell Robinson actually fouled him at the three-point line. I don't remember ever seeing that happen, but we're lucky that Giannis went on to miss all three free throws. We know he's not a good three-point shooter, but they were just a much better three-point shooting team. We were able to out-rebound the Milwaukee Bucks at an extremely high level. Mitchell Robinson had zero points in this game. I thought we should have got him involved around the basket, but also Brooke Lopez is one of the best interior defenders in the league. He's ridiculous. Even though he's getting older, it seems like he's getting better defensively, but the, the problem is, yeah, we've rebounded very well, and we're just able to out-rebound them. We actually got to the charity stripe so, some as well. But our three-point shooting and outside of Jalen Brunson, you could say quickly in crimes offensively, there was no consistent help. And quickly should have got more minutes in my opinion. But you look at the rebounds here. So the Knicks had 16 offensive rebounds. By the way, Mitchell Robinson, I believe he had 15 or 16 rebounds and six of them were offensive rebounds. So he continues to be a beast on the offensive boards. And that's going up against one of the most physical and just one of the most beastly centers in the league of Brooke Lopez. You've got to give credit to Mitchell Robinson. I know he doesn't have a crazy offensive game, but you need to count on others as well. But you look at the overall rebounds here. The Knicks had 56 rebounds to the Bucks, 41. But then you take a look at the Bucks on the other end when it comes to three-point shooting. They dub doubled us in three-point shooting. There were 20 for 39 from beyond the arc. Everyone had it going mostly for the Milwaukee Bucks. Lillard had 30. He ended up hitting four three-pointers. Giannis hits three. Bo Champ comes off the bench, hits a couple. The Knicks only made 10 threes tonight. The Bucs were, they shot 51%. We shot 25% from three. From the free throw line, you probably want to see that go up a little bit, but 76% from the free throw line, 19 for 25. You take that for the way, like the way this team's been shooting. And that's actually better than the Bucs. They shot 71%. I know Brooke Lopez missed one. Giannis missed some as as well, but I know Randall didn't execute from the free throw line a couple times when he was there, but just a waster performance by Jalen Brunson, 45 points, and it was just one of those nights just offensively, or it's just the way this offense is. You can't consistently count on it consistently for four quarters of basketball. Notice how it's always a tight game when we're coming from behind. We can never go on a big run and just continue to gain momentum because this offense isn't that isn't built that way. It's more of a read and react offense that it's not really built for longevity runs because the defense could I feel easily adjust to it unless like you you know Brunson was on one tonight. But we obviously got to talk about well I'll talk about Grimes. I thought Grimes was more confident tonight. Had a nice finish and transition. Nice couple side step threes maybe because JJ Redick is his kind of his trainer was actually commentating this game, so maybe he wanted to impress him. Grimes hit five threes. He had 17 points out to Grimes, just scoring the ball. Had some solid moments defensively. There was also some times, though, I'm like, step up on Damian Lillard. So there definitely was some inconsistencies there. But I thought Grimes played pretty well. You needed him to score in double digits, and he had a pretty big time three in the fourth quarter. But yeah, Julius Randle needs to step up. That's literally it. Maybe he's not fully 100% healthy. I don't like giving excuses, but I just don't get it. Like, injured or not, if you truly love this game, you're putting... I'm not trying to question his love for the game, but... Like, he's obviously not injured. He's recovering from an injury. But it just looks like this dude does not consistently care out there on the floor. I don't get it. Is it just... That's just how his body language is? Like, we just have to get used to his head being down? Like, are, should we be okay with that as fans? But there are some possessions that it, I'm like, has nothing to do with conditioning. Because there's some plays that it's just like... That doesn't come down to health. That's just a bad decision IQ-wise. He made a couple bad decisions in transition, settling for some stupid fadeaway jumpers, especially when there's this one possession. Julius Randle missed the three on the right wing. The Bucs have the ball, and I believe they lose it. The Knicks are in transition. And I don't want to say it was a mismatch. I don't remember who was on Julius Randle, but he settled for this really awkward fadeaway jumper that only hit the backboard. But 
It wasn't even just his IQ. We know his lack of awareness we talk about. He actually rebounded the ball well tonight. I'll give him credit there. Double digits in rebounds, and he managed to have over three three assists. But he was just missing wide-open threes. He got a couple buckets in the fourth quarter. Nice little, I want to. I don't want to say it was off-bounce. He actually kind of got Giannis off-bounce and hit a nice like fadeaway jumper in the fourth quarter, followaway jumper to cut it to a one-point game. But for three quarters of basketball, his IQ wasn't that good. The majority of this team, like we didn't turn the ball over at a very high rate, but I would say sometimes it was the quality of shots. Even though I love Jalen Brunson, he was amazing, amazing 45 points. He has to look to facilitate more and look to open up more for his teammates. But then there's also times I'm like, Josh Hart, you just got to freaking make that three. But Julius Randle, just so frustrating. Just, just so frustrating. There was a couple plays that it's like, Where's the consistent heart? Where's the consistent motor? Just play better. Like, because you guys know my stance on Julius Randle. I, I just feel like I'm repetitive with it. I'm repetitive with it. Julius Randle has the ability to be a good basketball player, and he has shown that. He's made it to the All-Star team a couple years, but it's like never two years in a row. You know, there's no overall consistency. He's a weird, inconsistent all-star it comes down to his iq it comes down to his awareness but to give him credit in the second half he did let brunson take the keys go ahead and score the basketball you are hot but i just feel so repetitive with this dude that you just can't win with julius randall or if you want to win the big thing down the line if you have big time expectations you just can't have that with randall as one of your best players on the team julius randall's five for 20 from the overall field he's one for nine from three five for nine from the free throw line did have 12 rebounds had a five assist 16 points, he had four fouls, only turned the ball over once. But at the end of the day, Giannis didn't have to have a big game. Damian Lillard, he ended up having a big game. Or I should say Chris Middleton didn't have to have a big game because Lillard was able to step up when it mattered most. You know, he was hitting his shots from beyond the arc. He was just he just looked so smooth out there on the floor. And Giannis was doing more than scoring. He was also distributing the basketball as well. He finished with six assists because he's just such a beast physically he gets the defense to collapse and he could kick it outside of the perimeter chris middleton had a cool 12 points brooke lopez only had five rebounds but he had eight blocks my bad not seven blocks eight blocks and he was four for ten from beyond the arc and jay crowder he killed us from beyond the arc when he entered the game he definitely gave them some momentum four for six cameron Payne didn't do much when he was out there same thing with pat Connaughton. at least offensively we know what he brings defensively but he does have the ability to shoot it just not tonight but you get a performance of like marjon bochamp has 13 points off the bench you're going to be in trouble jay crowder 14 points off the bench you're going to be in trouble when this team hasn't really been playing consistent defense and their bench hasn't consistently been contributing and they did that tonight then yeah you're going to be in trouble as a basketball club and when Bronson has 45 you know grime has a cool night but josh hart has six points on two of nine shooting you shoot it terrible from three defense chenzo doesn't do much offensively he had a moment that we like this team had moments i just don't understand we go right at like a couple of the best shot blockers in the league of Giannis and brooke lopez when dante divincenzo tried to go up on brooke lopez that confused me trying to do like the freaking john starks on jordan or horns grant <laughs> or his grant dunk right there that poster he just failed i didn't understand like a couple possessions in a row going at a couple of the best shot blockers we need to have better awareness but quickly 14 points 5 of 10 i thought he played solid when he was out there he should have had more than 22 minutes hardenstein felt he should have been more physical in this game he had a couple nice possessions defensively in the second half but when it came to the glass or when it came to just interior defense i thought he played a little softer than he has in prior games but I would have liked to see Grimes get involved more. Credit to the Bucks. Damian Lillard turned it on. Six straight points in like 20 seconds, it felt like. And good defensive stand by Brooke Lopez and Giannis at the end when Julius Randle looked to dribble penetrate. And Brooke Lopez forced Jalen Brunson into a very tough shot. This is a heartbreaking loss. A very, very heartbreaking loss for the first game of the end season tournament. Brunson came to play. We're missing RJ Bear. RJ getting off to a good start from three. It's crazy how the way how bad this three point shooting has been for the Knicks. It's like you're hoping RJ, like you're missing RJ's three point shooting, which is crazy to say because he's gone off to a good start from three, and you're missing that dribble penetration of finishing and drawing fouls as well. So I hope RJ gets better soon. I know he's that that knee um that knee bruise, and hopefully it's nothing worse than that. Hopefully, it's nothing worse than that. I don't know if there's anything new specific that came out, but Brook Lopez, eight blocks, timely three by Damian Lillard, timely and one on Grimes, Giannis hitting timely threes. <laughs> Uncharacteristic thing definitely had to happen for the box to win, but they won fair and square. I'm just frustrated. I'm very, very frustrated. Jay Crowder killed us from three. Just another thing. 
I usually as well like crap on the three point defense and the ancient defense and the the offense just didn't look good tonight. It it just didn't look good tonight. There was some ball movement, but it wasn't consistent. It just looked all over the place. It looked like there was no structure defensively. I, like usually, I would give us crap on the three point shooting, like leaving guys open from three. But when you have a guy like Giannis that's capable of working downhill, Chris Middleton, who's a three level scorer, Lillard, it's going to open up so much for the offense. But I feel we do need to collapse better and send better help and communicate. Let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.